Hi folks, welcome back to my channel. In my last week's video, I talked about two different parallel career tracks for software developers. And today I'm going to talk about something that connects these both tracks, about something that you will need to learn, that you will need to practice if you want to get promoted either to staff engineer or to engineering manager. And that thing is leadership. And I'm not talking about this cringy stuff that you know from motivational videos, like we can do it, we can get there. You are not a coach that motivates a football team to go out and crush the enemies. No, as a software developer, if you want to be a leader, you need to be able to get the project, get the people and get things done. Today, I'm going to tell you how to start with that. My name is Gregory, you're watching Not Only Code, let's start. First of all, you need to know that you do not become a leader the moment that someone adds a lead to your job title. You do not become a leader the moment that you move from software engineering to engineering management. You need to become a leader much earlier and prove yourself in that role before you formally get that title. Of course, there are exceptions. You can start your own company, hire a few people, and then you become a leader of that group you might be able to get a job with leadership responsibilities even though you've never had that responsibilities before. But more often than not, you will need to work in your current position, prove yourself that you can deliver things, that you can lead a group of people, that you can lead a project, and then eventually you'll formally become a leader. So while it takes time and effort to get all this done, and it definitely takes a lot of time, I mean years, to become a good leader, it's not that difficult to start. In the right environment, there are always opportunities for people who want to get more stuff done, who want to change things, who want to improve things. And I believe that in order to start becoming a leader, you need just three things. You need something to lead, you need people to join you and to approve that work, and eventually you need to figure out the solution and get it done. So let's break down these three points and then I will show you an example from early in my career when I took charge of something even though I wasn't formally a leader. Step number one is to find something to lead, something to change, something to improve. Leader is someone who gets the stuff done and in order to become a leader you need to be proactive. You need to volunteer to take charge of something that is not being worked on. There are a few ways to do it. One is whenever you hear that there is some new project, that there is some bigger work going on, you can talk to your manager and say, hey, I want to lead that thing. But you don't need to wait for an opportunity. You can create an opportunity for yourself. What I mean is that just look around. I'm pretty sure that wherever you work, in whatever environment, company you work, there are things that can be done much better. Just from top of my head, maybe there are no unit tests or end-to-end -end tests in your application. Maybe there is some piece of code that nobody wants to work on or it's so slow that everyone complains but it never gets prioritized. I always suggest people to write as many things as possible because lots of the ideas that you have might initially seem great but later for some reason it will appear that they can't be done. So make as long lists as possible and then one by one verify whether that ideas make sense. You can validate them by talking to your manager, by talking to other developers, by talking to product manager, see whether those things are still relevant, whether they actually make sense. After considering these ideas, you should end up with a list of three to maybe five items, the ones that made it past the first validation that are still relevant, that people actually believe their problem and that you believe that you can solve them. The second step is to get people on board. And by people, I mean two separate groups. First are people who will join you in solving that problem. Sometimes it might happen that you will be working on it on your own, but it's always good to have at least one or two other developers that will work uh, with you on that. And the second group of people are people who need to approve that thing so that it can actually get done. But let's start with developers first. How do you get people on board? Of course, if you have a team that you work with, then it's the best place to start. Talk to your teammates and see whether they are interested in solving that particular problem. But you can look broader than your team. You can talk to other people in your department because maybe that thing can be done by kind of a virtual team, a group of people that normally work on something else, but they can just work together for a couple of weeks on solving a particular issue. And the other group are people that need to approve that work. So people like your engineering manager, like product manager, maybe project lead, or and basically anyone who decides what gets done and when. 
It will take some time to get your idea approved and probably even more to get it prioritized and scheduled so that you can actually start working on that. But you can start by just mentioning that there is something that you want to work on, that there is something that you want to lead. You can talk about it to your engineering manager during your one-on-ones. You can ask your manager what can you do to help to prioritize that issue. It always helps if you are able to prove certain value. And by value, I mean catching money. If you can show that solving that particular problem will bring company more money, or if it will make company spend less money, then your idea has a higher chance to get approved. For example, you can say that if you op manage to optimize that particular part of the application, you will cut the response time from 200 milliseconds to 20 or 50 milliseconds, which means that the company will not need so many servers. You might find it frustrating that even though you are excited about this problem that you found and that you are strongly convinced that it will provide a lot of value to the company, it will be hard to get it prioritized. That's unfortunately very common. There are always way more features and other things to work on than people and time to actually invest in that work. But don't give up. If you are onto something, then keep pushing for that. And if you believe that that problem will just never get prioritized, move on and find something else. The third thing is to work out a solution and to get the thing done. Now, working out the solution can be done before you get approval for solving the problem. You will always have some spare time in your work. I mean, I hope you do. If you never have any spare time, then something's wrong with your working environment. So that spare time can be spent on solving that problem. Even if it wasn't approved yet, you can just experiment with different solutions, you can work something out. And then that fact, you already have a solution that you already have proof of concept and that you know that it's feasible, can help you to convince uh, the stakeholders, people who will approve what gets done. Then there's this period of maybe kind of mundane work because the excitement of getting the project approved is gone and now you have to deliver the thing. But that's also when you can practice your leadership skills. That's when on daily basis you will be making certain decisions, you will be deciding how this stuff gets done, who works on what, when maybe you will have to solve some conflicts, when you will have to prove that you are able to deliver the thing that you promised. I will be talking more about leadership in my future videos where I will mention how to solve the problems within a team, how to communicate well, how to make sure that everything goes according to the plan. But for now, let me show you an example from my career where I introduced some practice in the company that helped us with sharing knowledge. A couple of years ago, I worked for a company where the team of developers was generally very young and inexperienced. I was the most experienced software developer there and I wanted to ensure that the team learns the best practices and that we all use them when writing code. The problem to be solved was there because our code wasn't in great shape. It wasn't an urgent thing to do because we were still making progress towards our deliveries. But I believe that the quality of our code suffered because not everyone followed the same style, not everyone followed the same practices. So I had a problem that I wanted to solve. I talked to my manager, I talked to other stakeholders, and over a couple of weeks, I convinced them to give me some time so that I can work on that thing and that I can involve the rest of the team and figure out some knowledge sharing solution. I decided to find the solution myself first, then give it a try and see how the rest of the team responds to that. And based on that, tweak the solution or maybe change it entirely. So I was thinking about documentation with good code examples. I was thinking about writing tests that check whether you follow those uh, examples were or not. I was thinking about watching some courses and maybe hiring some coach. But eventually, I decided to just introduce internal trainings. The idea was that once a month, one person, initially me, because I was the most experienced, but then hopefully others, would prepare a training session that would take place in the office, maybe for one, one and a half hour. It wasn't a revolutionary idea, but the company hasn't done anything like that before. So I spent a couple of hours preparing the first training. I don't remember what it was about, probably writing good tests. And I introduced the training, I showed it to everyone, we did a QA session, we did some demo, we recorded it so that people in the future could later watch it. And then 
people actually enjoy that kind of thing. So after a couple of trainings that I did, other people took over and the thing kept going on. From the beginning to the first training, it took me maybe a month to get everything done, to find the problem, to find the solution, to get people on board and to deliver it. And then from then on, it became part of our regular work. Once a month, we had an internal training. And that's all for today, folks. As you see, starting to become a leader is not a rocket science. It certainly takes some courage and initiative. It takes a lot of effort, sometimes a lot of time, but everyone can do it. Everyone can find something that they want to change. Everyone can push for that change and to eventually make it happen. I'm curious about your stories. If you've ever had a chance to initiate some idea and to get stuff done, uh, make sure to share it with me in the comment. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel and come back next week for more videos. Take care.